So how does the front end communicate to a back end server? And how does the front end retrieve and send data to an external data source that is stored somewhere on the cloud? That is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Now, recently I had a question from Rich Williams and Rich asks, what is my thinking regarding React Node versus PHP? Um, and do I have any expectations on how pages are to be reloaded uh, on websites using PHP? Or is there an equivalent method for instant updating? Is this what REST API or JSON is? And then that kind of sparked off a discussion uh, where we started talking about the different methods of uh, using things like Ajax and RESTful APIs and so forth. And so I want to talk about this in this video, the differences between Ajax and RESTful APIs and so forth. So there's three common ways to request data from an external service, such as a web server. The first one is SOAP, which is Simple Object Access Protocol. Now that was kind of an old way of, of accessing uh, the data or sending data up, and that mostly used XML. The next way is AJAX, which is a synchronous JavaScript with XML. Um, and after that, we've got a RESTful API, and that is representational transfer state. Um, and these are different ways of communicating to external sources. So for instance, with Ajax, you have the ability to send and receive data asynchronously from an external data source. And that could be a separate file on a web server or another web page. And that could be perhaps uh, accessing a PHP file on a, on a server or a Python file or what have you. It could actually be accessing uh, another web URL, right? And that could be a RESTful endpoint. So I'll get on to RESTful endpoints in just a second, but, but Ajax, because it's asynchronous, it means that you can update the, the DOM, which is the document object model of HTML asynchronously as data gets sent from the, the external data source down to the, the front end, which gets changed by JavaScript. And so you would use JavaScript to manipulate the document object model, which are basically the, the structure, the nodes, if you will, of HTML. You can actually update those through JavaScript and you can change or you can update and replace the contents of those nodes with whatever has been retrieved from uh, the, the, the Ajax call. And these Ajax calls can be both get requests and post requests, which means that you can actually post things up to the server and then wait for a response coming back. So I've just touched on get requests there, and now we're gonna move into RESTful APIs. So a RESTful API is a endpoint on a website, or no, it doesn't necessarily need to be a website. It's, it's an endpoint of a server that you can request over HTTP. And because you're doing it over HTTP, you do, or you use these HTTP protocols. So for example, you could be doing a get, you could do, be getting a, a, a post, so you could be posting things up, you could be doing a delete, you could be doing a put, and there's other ones as well. The most common RESTful requests are a get and a post. And because you're using a HTTP protocol, you'll also have a HTTP response. And that response will also have a series of headers and a, a, a status code. And those status codes should, they should follow the HTTP uh, protocol status codes. So for example, a 200 is a 200 okay, which basically means that, that the request was okay and that's returned an okay response. Uh, you could have a 500, that's an internal server error. That means that the something has gone badly wrong and therefore a 500 res response has been returned. You could get a 400 uh, error code and that would mean that 
there is bad parameters, so that's a bad request, basically means if you're doing like a post or a get request and you're supplying parameters up to that request, those parameters are not are, are either invalid or they're just not the expected parameters at that endpoint. You could also get a 401 and that means that that you are not allowed access to uh, to, to that endpoint. So that's an access denied error. And of course, there's loads and loads of other HTTP status codes. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll link to a, a list of the available status codes for RESTful APIs. And of course, with those, those status codes, you can actually use those to tell whatever it is that's requesting those API endpoints how the API is behaving based on your requests. So for instance, if you were to try and access a secure area of a website or a, a web system and you don't supply the correct credentials, so you're not logged in, for instance, you would get a 401 access denied error. Also, if, uh, if you supplied the wrong set of arguments, then you would get a 400 back. And also the API can return a list of links to other API endpoints that relate to whatever it is that, that has been supplied. Essentially, the API is going to encode the response. And that might be formatted in JSON. It could even be in XML. It could also be a completely different format. It could be HTML. It could be, um, it could be a PDF document. It could be a download. It could be an image. But the API will decide on what the type is, the content type that, that gets returned. Um, and also, you can use these API endpoints, these, these JSON responses, if it is JSON, to represent um, a, something in a, an external data source. What you shouldn't do, though, is have it as a one-to-one -one representation of how your data is structured in the external data source. So you shouldn't be mapping your, your field names in your database to the JSON keys in your JSON, in your JSON co in, uh, object that you're returning. Um, and you shouldn't be sending things that are uh, deemed as security risks like IDs and, and so forth. Also, these APIs should return a generic response. So they shouldn't be tailored, as I've mentioned, to a particular data structure of a database, and they shouldn't also be tailored to a specific client. So, for example, if you had an API and you had a website, the API shouldn't be formatted specifically for that website because you might want to to use that API again for something completely different, like, for example, a mobile phone. So. This is where you can actually start tailoring your API requests, your RESTful API endpoints uh, to be very generic. And then it's up to the clients to decide how to actually use that data that's come down. And of course, you can have AJAX and API endpoints working together. So your front end, your clients, your JavaScript uh, enabled page could be calling upon some form of controller, and then that controller could be calling an API endpoint. And that API endpoint will be returning JSON, and then that JSON could be injected into your, um, your HTML document object model, right? So your page could be constantly being changed by the feed that's being processed by the AJAX, and that AJAX would be calling a API endpoint returning JSON. JSON then gets injected via JavaScript into the HTML. And you could be running a polar, which means that this is constantly being refreshed. This is this is very good for, for perhaps usability. However, there is there is a, a big negative with using Ajax in this way. And that is because Google bots and indexes, search engines, simply cannot index um, pages that are being constantly changed. And by that, I mean changed dynamically and asynchronously. So they prefer static pages that they can index and crawl over. If the page is constantly being changed, then that's very difficult. And also they have to wait until that Ajax, 
Ajax call has been processed. So that's the argument between using Ajax to have a, and have a single page, a single web page that does everything where you click buttons and things start spinning around and, and your Ajax calls are being made and things are being changed on the page to having a series of pages that can be indexed uh, correctly and semantically and things aren't being changed and refreshed on the fly. It all depends on what you want to achieve in your project, of course. But I hope that kind of helps. I hope that explains the differences between API endpoints and asynchronous Ajax calls. I'm probably going to do some tutorials on these things um, because it's probably easier to explain them with some demonstration. Thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye. If you haven't done so already, please do check out the howtocodewell.net website. This is going to be home of the YouTube tutorials and the videos that I'm putting on YouTube. So this one here is the Microsoft Buys GitHub. This was the video I did on my opinions for that. We also have um, some courses. Not all of the courses are on here. This is the Udemy for Docker. This is the PHP stuff. Udemy and Skillshare. We also have links to Docker in Motion. This is the course I did for Manning Publications. Uh, we also have a shop and in this shop we have various books for different programming languages. These are books that I recommend. The one for Python when you're learning Flask is this book here. This is Flask Web Development. Uh, which is this one just here, if I highlight that. So do check that out.